tell us what you've learned about using movement and gesture to maybe access flow when you're rehearsing your bit and just how you find you best get into flow and doing comedy in general? Well, I think it starts with intention, but there might be something behind intention. So if you're writing a joke, I think the jokes that you're the most proud of, because I always say that you're in the business of original self-expression. Original self-expression, and that could be as an actor, that could be as a painter, a dancer, whatever it might be, a musician, comic. So I think, I think the goal is not to be aware of the movement you are making. You're going to accentuate things with your body and do stuff, but I think that the movement should be something that happens because it informs what you're saying with emphasis or with color. But I think once you're aware of it, you're going to come across. And I think the audience, whether they know it or not, what's fascinating is they can smell you manipulating them. So what I try to do is not worry about how I move. I knew that would happen to me. I'm physical. I can communicate with my body well. And for whatever reason, I do that. But what's more important is that I'm getting to what I really want to say. And it's probably something like trying to answer a question for myself that comes out in a funny way. That's interesting. Yeah. How, do you notice, Brian, a, a big difference in how you feel and the quality of the reception you get when you feel in flow performing versus not? If so, could you tell the audience actually about any experience you've had where you just could not access flow and maybe even like bombed? Well, you know, flow comes when you're at that, what I call boiling point. Every bit becomes a song. There's a perfect number of words and the perfect emphasis for every bit, every sort of idea you want to convey. And before you get to that stage, you're not in flow. But then what happens is like right before you're about to hit a special, you're singing. Every song is you figure it out. It's not row, row, row your boat. It's row, row, row. You get that. So now what you're doing is just going. You're just there to give them an experience. And then when you're in that state of flow, what happens is something beautiful, which is like, I'll find myself managing the audience. I can watch one side starts laughing. I was in Sacramento and I think I told the story, but the one side was laughing so hard. I knew they were gonna get tired. The other side was, they were a little tired. I realized I was favoring this side. And then this side was right in the middle. So I had to take air out of that side and put it into this side. Then there was a mm. guy who wanted to be, he wanted to be seen. I could see he was a young man who just, he was so overwhelmed that he wanted to be like whatever was going on the stage. He was trying to get involved with the show. He didn't know what to do. So I had to acknowledge him. I had to give him a little serum. You got to give him a little, I see you. I got to acknowledge you. I got you. And then keep him. So what you realize is you're, you're playing the audience almost like an instrument itself, almost like a mm. giant, um, a giant, what's it called? What is this thing? What is that terrible instrument? Like accordion. Thing? Accordion. Yeah. yeah. Air in, air out, moving. That's flow. That's when you mm. that's when you realize that you belong nowhere else but there. And that's where you can do an hour and a half on stage and you're not tired. And you can get back on stage and do another hour and a half and you're still not tired. That's kind of that's I guess when you are getting close or very close to what you have imagined in your mind's eye.